live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. The Liberals' new look government has been officially sworn in. Newcomer Erica Betts among those standing alongside the Premier today. But the work is only just beginning, with ramping the Commission of Inquiry and conversion therapy riddling the government already. Through the doors of Government House, the new look Liberal Cabinet appearing for the first time. The Premier taking his oath alongside Erica Betts and Jane Howlett. Nick Street and Michael Ferguson among familiar faces returning as Jeremy Rockliffe endorses his team. A team that will, will work across uh, the parliament to achieve uh, the needs and aspirations of the Tasmanian people. Tasmania's new transport and business minister confirming he's committed to a range of issues, despite being repeatedly asked about his stance on the conversion therapy bill. It is amazing that you should be so concerned about this one issue when there are men and women dealing with cost of living crises in their house uh, and uh, interest rates. Labor taking to Bell Reef ahead of a Liberal Franklin committee meeting tonight, saying it's a serious test of Jeremy Rockliffe's leadership. Clearly there's a split in the Liberal Party and it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top. As the Greens label Guy Barnett a part-time health minister with the role of Attorney General and Justice also on his plate. Just not possible to do them justice. Something's got to slip. It's either our response to the Commission of Inquiry or it's people who desperately need health services that they're not getting. He is uh, full bottle and full throttle. The Nurses and Midwives Union is reviewing the Health Department's response to overcrowding in EDs, with the Premier confirming he's committed to banning ramping and implementing a 60-minute protocol. What it actually means is that it's addressing the fundamental issue, and that is improving access and flow in our hospitals. It's still not clear how the government will negotiate the new parliament, still short of a majority with two experienced independents playing a close hand on their level of support. But criticism continues over the Premier's deal with the new Jackie Lambie Network members. Parliament hasn't even sat yet and we get these uh, criticisms of new members of Parliament who have brought to the table uh, some ideas for improvement. Parliament will return mid-May. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. A man has been killed in a single vehicle crash at St Mary's. It happened on Esk Main Road around 1.30. It's believed the car crashed into a tree. The driver, the sole occupant of the vehicle, died at the scene. Metro buses won't run into Gagebrook of an evening until further notice. Amid fears for driver and passenger safety following repeat rock attacks. Seven Tasmania understands buses have come under fire at least six times in recent days, forcing Metro to suspend three routes beyond Bridgewater after 7pm. The Rail, Tram and Bus Union says drivers have reported an increase in violent behaviour in the Gagebrook area over recent weeks. Metro is working with Tasmania Police. A free car wash for drivers in Newtown this afternoon, courtesy of a water main shooting 20 metres into the air after being hit by a car. Emergency services calling in a crane to pull the car out of the Newtown Rivulet. Two people were taken to hospital for assessment, the road reopening around 2.40. It's three decades since the United Nations found Tasmania's anti-gay laws to be in breach of international human rights standards. A panel unveiled at Salamaca Arts Centre to honour those who fought for equality. Their work sparking change around the world in countries including India, Fiji and Singapore. I continue to see that decision cited by parliaments and courts right around the world when it comes to repealing antiquated and discriminatory laws against LGBTIQA plus people. Tasmanians have indeed changed the world and given opportunity for recognition of gay rights as human rights. The plaque, a reminder, even the smallest of groups can create historic change. A car showroom is set for demolition. The Hobart City Council approving a development application to replace the building on the corner of Barrack and Macquarie Streets with a multi-use complex. The new build is set to feature 56 apartments, an underground car park and several commercial businesses. It's so important for us to have more medium density housing in Hobart. Compared to other capital cities, we don't have as much choice for people in the type of housing they want. 
The application is one of more than 600 approved by the council in the past year. Hobart has bucked the national trend when it comes to rental prices. PropTrack's Market Insight report reveals Hobart is the only capital city to record a decline in rents in the past year, down by 1%. The median weekly rent for a unit in the city also dropped to $470. In regional Tasmania, the cost to rent a home remains at $450 a week. Hobart Airport has seen an unprecedented start to 2024, with more than 760,000 travellers arriving in the first three months alone. The previous record was held in the first quarter of 2019, where that number was 10,000 less. Another 33,000 people are due to arrive before the end of the month as the school holidays get underway. Hundreds of army cadets from across the country have descended on Tasmania for their toughest physical challenge. Held at Lake Barrington, participants are shivering through a series of exercises designed to push them to their limits. Making the most of morning sunshine, these army cadets are taking on some of the toughest tasks of their lives. As far as individual challenges uh, go, this is the pinnacle uh, of what our organisation has to offer. 89 teens from across the country vying to be awarded the prestigious Boomerang and Torch, the Australian Army cadets' highest honour. It is quite tough. It does push the cadets um, in a safe manner to their peak, both physically and mentally. Part of the three-day program is an 11-kilometre kayak around Lake Barrington, followed by a building challenge designed to test their teamwork and problem-solving skills. They'll uh, employ their field engineering abilities to construct a raft uh, and they'll cross the lake to retrieve uh, a dummy for a first aid scenario. Cadets afraid of heights are also facing their fears in an intense canyoning challenge. They've been in training for months, making sure they're up to the task. You have to be able to uh, walk a 15k um, hill and back again, and I don't think I'd be able to do it. All while camping out, with only sleeping bags and these hoochies to protect them from the elements. I think their biggest complaint last night coming in when you speak to them at the rafting was they were a bit cold last night. Despite chilly conditions and arduous tasks, cadets are having the time of their lives. Even though this is a challenging activity, they are finding it really rewarding. And going out and speaking to a lot of the cadets at their different activities, the morale is quite high. Testing themselves and making friends for life. Annie Green, 7 Tasmania News. Monceston Grammar's Grade 12 students have set out for their annual 24-hour walkathon to raise funds for homeless people in Tasmania. Now in its 61st year, the college chose charity Strike It Out to help locals doing it tough. There's no room in the shelters. There's, they can only accommodate for two nights and after that they've got nowhere to go. So there's a nowhere for a mother and a daughter and after tomorrow night there's nowhere for them and that just breaks my heart. The movement is inspired by John F. Kennedy who said that a fit man should be able to walk 50 miles in 20 hours. The challenge not lost on Year 12 school captain everyone's Charlie Toll. Everyone's all really keen and pumped. We know it's going to be a tough challenge but everyone's excited for it, yeah. So far, the school has raised over $70,000. The Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra is hoping to encourage more young students to take up an instrument and study music. The Words and Music Tour, supported by the state government, is currently travelling northern Tasmania. A taste of the symphony in the comfort of their own music hall. Perth primary school students taking in a special TSO concert. It's really nice to see them play and hear what they sound like as an orchestra together. With many Tasmanian children not having access to regular quality music lessons, the TSO aims to inspire children and teachers with their sessions. Music is essential in terms of somebody's development, their brain development, their social development, their physical development, and it influences the way they think, they solve problems. During the tours, the TSO demonstrates how to teach music and support classroom learning, enabling teachers to encourage students to become musical stars in their own right. The show's been designed for, for kids as well. It shows them you know, all the different instruments they can play, which is a fantastic opportunity for kids that maybe don't, don't see that elsewhere. Um, so yeah, we were really excited that they wanted to come to Perth. The TSO has been visiting Tasmanian schools since the 70s and is keen to broaden its reach, gifting music 
for generations to come. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. Mobile phone coverage on King Island has been given a significant boost thanks to the completion of a $9.8 million Telstra network upgrade. The work saw the construction of two new mobile sites along with upgrades to existing infrastructure to increase 4G capacity and deliver faster streaming speeds for residents and visitors. Telstra has upgraded its link between Victoria and Cape Wickham, which is a huge increase in terms of speeds across the island. It's great to see that industry and all three levels of government have worked together to bring this project to fruition. Telstra is the only carrier to provide coverage on King Island. A local animal shelter is supplying free cat food to owners struggling with cost of living pressures. The new program hopes to reduce teen lives annual intake, with surrender numbers on the rise. Letting the cat out of the bag, 10 Lives launching its Meow Meals program designed for Tasmanians struggling to feed their feline family members due to financial constraints. It's not just animal, it's everything else. It's, you know, rent and all your other bills that have gone up. Packed with enough dry and wet food to last a fortnight, the kids are free to anyone who needs them. All they need to do is come and ask for a meow meal. No questions asked, we'll do that because, as I say, it's about animal welfare. The initiative hoped to be a win-win for all parties, reducing the number of cats under 10 lives care by allowing families to stay together. There's a, a very tough side to animal welfare and being in a shelter and seeing a family in tears uh, giving up uh, their beloved pet because they're trying to do the best thing for it. We see the cat come in and it's not always the same. You know, they shut down. Ten Lives receives more than 300 surrenders each year due to the cost of living crisis. It says it's prepared to run the program for as long as it's needed. Up and running thanks to food donations from the public, Meow Meals is off to a perfect start. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. It'll be a few weeks until we see Jack Rewald pull on the Clarence jumper again. The Roos coach telling us the retired Tiger won't run out on Saturday against Launceston as he'd planned, caught up with AFL commentary commitments. So hopefully the plan is to um, have him uh, back in, an, in a couple of weeks after that game. So he's just got to wait to see what his roster is like through, um, through Fox. North Hobart concentrating on their mental game against ladder leaders North Launceston. If we can get our defensive structures right and, and put them under pressure and, and be able to get, get some scoreboard pressure on, on there, I think um, we, we'll see a good game. The Norkies hoping a focus on a quick ball movement through the midfield will hand them a second win against winless Lauderdale. With an NBL championship in hand, an Olympic medal is now within reach for two Jackies. Will Magne and Jack McVeigh, catching the eye of Brian Gorgian and fellow Boomer selectors, called into a 22-man squad. The boys all smiles, opening their letters from the selectors. Great final series and should be very proud of the win. I'm pleased to advise you that you've been selected in the Australian Boomers Olympic squad. Can't wait to call my mum, so <laughs> pretty cool. They'll take part in a training camp in July where the squad will be whittled down to the final 12 to head to Paris. Rob Razor Wilkinson makes his comeback to the Octagon in Vegas this weekend. After going 4-0 in 2022, the Hobart fighter has been out of the professional fighters league since last year after failing a drug test. He'll fight England's Tom Breeze on Saturday night our time. A few Tassie athletes are off to a good start at the Australian Athletics Championships in South Australia. Launceston's Stuart McStwain winning his 1500 metre heat this afternoon in 3 minutes 36.97 seconds. After blitzing her heat, Turner's Beach teenager Chelsea Scullier claiming silver in the under 20 100 metre final. And Kinbra's Alex Smiley setting a personal best in her 400 metre para final. Good evening. The west woke to a foggy morning this morning. A few isolated showers also fell about the west. It was otherwise a lovely autumn day. Hobart 16, Launceston 20, Devonport 18, Burnie 19 degrees. Flinders Island recorded 20 degrees, Smithton and Lowhead 19. Friendly Beaches 18, 17 for King Island, St Helens and Bushy Park. Mariah Island, Grove and Strawn, Auk 16, 13 the maximum for Lyweny.
Low level cloud hovered about most of the state today. High level cloud is seen over the south and east and smoke is seen over parts of the northwest. Mostly cloudy conditions are seen to the southern ocean pushing over the southern coast of WA, South Australia across Victoria and over western Tasmania. Tomorrow, a high moves to the south of WA, extending a ridge over the majority of the country. A low sits just off central western Australian coast, whilst tropical cyclone Paul is over the Coral Sea. West to northwesterly winds 20 to 30 knots, about the south 10 to 20 knots elsewhere. Southwesterly swells increasing up to 4 metres in the south and 3.5 metres in the west. A strong wind warning has been issued tomorrow for coastal waters between Tasman Island to Low Rocky Point. 19 are partly cloudy in Hobart tomorrow, 19 also in Huonville with a shower or two in Campania, 20 degrees. Grey skies across the north, Launceston 21, Devonport and Georgetown both 20. Partial cloud for Burnie, 18, 90% chance of showers for Strawn, 17, 19 to the top for Wynyard. The east remaining partly cloudy, St Helens, Swansea and Port Arthur all expecting a maximum of 20 degrees. Saturday, showers about the west and far south with possible afternoon showers about central parts. Sunday, showers about the west and Bass Strait Islands with light showers developing about the north during the afternoon. Monday, showers about the west and Bass Strait Islands. They continue with possible light afternoon and evening showers elsewhere. Looking further north now, possible after sh afternoon showers on the way for Brisbane, 27, partly cloudy in Canberra, Adelaide and Darwin, 24 and mostly sunny skies in Sydney. It's mostly cloudy across most parts in Tasmania this evening. Hobart 12, Launceston 13 and Devonport 14. Tassie is revving up for the Red Hot Summer Tour in Lonnie this weekend, Kim, with almost perfect conditions expected. A very mild forecast. Thanks very much there, Kaya. And that is all your news for this Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your night's viewing here on Sydney Tasmania. Good night, everyone.